On dia. Welcome to another episode of Tristan Take Video. This one's a really special one. Today we're out in Torre Grossa for the Grand Classic Modest Capel. This is the second year that the Modest Capel race has been being run and uh, I wish it wasn't being run. But the last two years we've done this race in celebration of the rider of Modest Capel, who was a young Catalan rider who was killed in a training accident a couple of years ago in 2019. And uh, this race today and last year has been put on in Modest's memory. Modest was a young guy who I raced against a number of times. And from everything I understand of him, he was just an incredible human being and, uh, and a great cyclist. So while I really wish that this race wasn't happening today, uh, it is, and we're out here in celebration of Modest's life. I'm gonna race this race in the way he would have loved to have raced it. Last year I had a really good race. I got in a number of breakaways and I ended up getting up onto the podium, which was really nice for the last race of the year. So I've just signed on. I'm just rolling the last kilometer of the course and then I'm gonna go and get changed and get ready. Alrighty, so today's course, 136 kilometers. It is a few laps of a big figure eight circuit. Each lap has two small rises in it. They're not really climbs. They won't split it, but they just add a bit of pain to the legs. We got a couple of sprint points. Uh, there should be a little bit of crosswind around. We got Diedrich here, our resident breakaway man. He is gonna send it into the breakaway today. Or maybe I'll join him. Should it be both of us? Should we go both of us? Maybe we go both of us in the breakaway. Go and do that. Catch you on the other side. How are you feeling? Okay. It's a pretty emotional day, hey? Yeah. How do you feel? Two things like this at the same time. Yeah, man, it's a pretty special day. <laughs> send it in memory of Modest. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's All right. Do that. Okay, Tristan is dying, but he did a great job. Tristan has been on a group following or trying to catch the breakaway. They were 40 seconds far, but Tristan is tired. <laughs> but he tried and that's always the important thing. We are only around 15 kilometers from the end of the race. And Tristan is tired. <laughs> and he's got some cramps, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
That played out slightly differently to what I was expecting. I'll tell you what, a four day, 1000 kilometer trip to Mont Ventoux and back the week before a race, it doesn't give you any extra. <laughs> it doesn't make you any stronger, that's for sure. I'm cooked. Okay, so as you can see, I'm back in Girona now had some food, had a shower, and uh, now I'm just gonna sit down and do a little recap of what happened in the race there. A bit of a different result and a different feeling in the race to what I'd expected or hoped for. And so we rolled out, and as always, there was the initial few attacks. I kind of moved my way to the front, and, uh, and then people started attacking, and so we went up and over the first rise, down the other side, took a left-hand turn, took another left-hand turn. There was a sprint point at the 11 kilometer mark, which I had actually flagged for myself because last year I won that first sprint and then I went on to position quite highly at the end, which means I got the overall sprint competition. So this year I was thinking, oh, maybe I can do the same kind of thing. So I ended up going off the front for that first sprint at 11 Ks in. I didn't actually sprint for it. I just popped off the front of this little group that was up the front. And uh, then I got a bit of a lead out from the motorbike and the car. So I stayed away by a couple of seconds to get that first sprint. And then just after I went through the sprint line, I got mowed down by a chase group. Off the front of that went a small group, which ended up being a breakaway of four, which was actually the breakaway that stayed away all the way to the line. And because I had gone so deep to get that sprint point, I actually ended up dropping right back to the back of the peloton and trying to recover for the next sort of 15 kilometers or so. So I didn't realize that breakaway of four had gone off the front. Obviously I had missed it. And then when I learned that they had gone off the front about 20 kilometers later, one of my teammates said to me, oh yeah, there's a group of four off the front. I was like, oh, we need to have someone in it because we can't have a group of four off the front that have got some strong guys in it and not have someone in. So then I started a bit of another move to get a group going to go across to that group of four. So in that move, there was about nine guys. And honestly, it was a little bit frustrating. There were some guys rolling. There were some guys not rolling. There was just not the cohesion that you want out of a chase group like that. We all should have been committing to get across to the breakaway and then people would start playing games but there was no cohesion, so some guys were rolling and some weren't. So by the time that we went off the front to try and get across to that main uh, breakaway, they had a gap of about two minutes. So we made it to within about 40 seconds, as Fernando said there, but we just didn't quite make it all the way across. We could see them up the road, but they were some super, super strong guys and uh, super respect to those guys, four of them. There was two from the same team, and uh, these are guys that are just mega strong, a couple of big Dutch guys. So. Yeah, kudos to, to those guys. But uh, for, that meant for our group, there was eight of us. And then eventually towards the end, they just started attacking each other, which I couldn't understand. I was like, we haven't even made the front of the race and you guys are going to attack each other now. And then eventually another chase group came across from behind because my group was just attacking itself. So that group of 15 then caught and then they started attacking. And by this stage, because we were so far in and I just haven't done the training, I just ended up not uh, being able to hang on. And so eventually we came through town one last time and we were onto the final uh, half of the circuit and a few guys attacked and I just couldn't go with the move at all and I started cramping and the peloton eventually caught me and then I ended up just getting dropped from the peloton because I was so cooked and I also thought you know what I'm the kind of guy that I like to race for first I don't want to race for 15th so I was just looking to basically finish the race and uh, get through the finish line there so yeah I kind of just sat up cruised my way in as always at these races there's an amazing amount of support and in particular for this race because it's such a special race so we had all of Modest's family and friends and the entire community from Torre Grossa and a lot of the community from Barcelona and a lot of the cycling community. In the racing scene here was there, which was really nice to have and really nice to see. And uh, it was really nice to roll across the line and just kind of soak it up. It was a pretty emotional day for a lot of people. Uh, it's still a very, very fresh event and a very fresh uh, memory. So yeah, really nice to have the support of everyone there and to be able to support in return. Once again, thank you so much to Modest Family for putting this on and for the entire Catalonia Cycling Federation for supporting this event. Yeah, I hope to be back next year for the third running of the Modest Capel Memorial Race. So that race being the last race of the season, that is my 2021 season done. I'm pretty cooked, I'm pretty tired. I'm ready for some time off the bike now. I'm gonna put my legs up and I'm gonna make some vlogs and I will see you guys all in the next episode. I'm Tristan Take Video very, very soon. Have a great week. Adieu.